Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and in collaboration with the Bond Group, I'd like to present to you the 1965 Maserati 3500 GTI Sebring. This is one of 348 Series 1 Sebrings ever produced. Sebring named in honor of the 1957 win that Maserati took home at the 12 hours of Sebring, and this car was aimed at the American Grand Touring market. Designed by Vignale, the Sebring really showed off Maserati's ability for fine coach work, and the fact that this 2 Plus 2 had a ton of room for your bags, it was the perfect weekend getawayer. And when you take a look inside, you start to appreciate not only the simplicity, but the elegance of the design. This would have been a very big statement back in 1965. So let's take a quick peek under the hood and go for a drive. When you get in this car, it's instantly very familiar if you've been lucky enough to drive a Ferrari 250 GT. I know that's kind of a crazy benchmark to use, but everything's very familiar. And although we don't have the 2.9 liter V12 up front, this three and a half liter straight six twin cam twin plug sounds pretty great. And although the I in GTI stands for injection, this one has been converted from the Lucas injection system to triple Weber carbs. And if you miss the boat financially, on the 250 GTPF coupe, which now go for like $600,000. This is probably the, uh, the frugal option. Back in 1962 or 63 when this came out, they had an option for an automatic gearbox, which would have been pretty innovative and cool at the time. However, today, this ZF5 speed is the one you want. And I know I've said it before, but I love a nice thin wood grain steering wheel. This is like very enjoyable motoring. The interior feels so ornamental. Everything is like jewelry, even down to where this blinker stock comes into play. And naturally it's all in Italian. So we've got benzina for fuel, olio for oil pressure, olio for oil temperature and etc. The ZF is a joy to drive, although it takes a little getting used to. And it's really just a two, three shift. Nice, solid engagement. It gains quite a bit of attention. It doesn't have quite the shock and awe factor of a Ferrari 250 GT. However, people definitely come up to you and ask, what the heck is that? They know it's special because it looks special. It's got the right lines and this steel bodywork, mm, beautiful. Classic Italian design. This one's right up at the end of the run. 
of the Series 1 because they uh, started doing the Series 2 in 1965. This is a 1965, but it's right at the end of that run. And uh, actually, in 1964, Maserati developed a 3.7 liter, a 3,700cc engine that uh, they were dropping into the Series 1 car. So, like any Italian car, you've got to ask more questions than just what year is it. There's always little quirks and changes from car to car. And who knows, you might have two 1964s, one with a 3500 engine and one with a 3700 engine sitting right next to each other. There were only 348 of these Series 1 cars built. So this is definitely a special thing to see out on the road. If you do see one, Obviously, be careful, but get yourself a picture. someone might buy one of these uh, partially maybe you wanted a 250 GT and you missed the boat on the pricing there those shot way up uh, these are pretty high too but certainly lower than a 250 GT but it is also a really nice piece of Italian heritage history in the automotive world because Maserati's maybe today we don't look at them quite the same but Maserati was a big deal in racing back in the day and the fact that this has the Sebring name to honor the win at the 12 hours of Sebring back in the late 50s. That's very cool to have a commemorative car. And this would have been top of the line. And these inline sixes are nothing to scoff at. They have such an incredible tone throughout the rev range. It's a luxury Grand Tour. It's still pretty visceral. You can hear all the gear whine and everything. It's it's definitely a driver's car. car. You don't rush shifts. You just let everything happen as it happens. But it also isn't slow. We've got 235 horsepower to play with. torque everywhere in this rev range which is really nice i mean even down low at like 2500 rpm you can start to lean on it and and you get what you want Brakes work nicely, although they definitely require a little bit of force. You don't just breathe them. You're going to need a little bit of muscle, but uh, it, it, there's plenty there when you ask for it. My favorite thing about driving these old Italian cars, though, is the visibility. It's like yeah, I'm just in a bubble.
I know it's goofy, but I think one of the nice luxuries of this car is that it has the uh, self-canceling directional. That's a frustrating thing. I find myself driving some of these old cars and it's easy to forget to turn off your blinker after you've taken your turn, but when you've got the little things, it's the little things that make a car a lot safer and more drivable. Not heavy although you've got to be deliberate I mean it's obviously not power assisted so it gets heavier as you slow down so when you need more lock as you're taking a corner you know just be cognizant of the fact that you're gonna to have to put a little more muscle into it than you were than you were when you were just cruising along this short little drive in the Maserati Sebring. It's gonna be up on Bring a Trailer. Really excited to see this one sell, although I will miss it. I like driving it. And it's great little around town cruiser. It's fantastic. This is like the perfect GT car. And it's also a collectible for, I think, reasonable money probably. I mean, compared to its contemporaries, holy cow, what a thing. Thank you to the Bond Group for this opportunity. Of course, don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one.